So, got a big day today. Train's coming down, TC2's coming down today. We're taking it down with uh, with TC1. That's TC1, I'll be up there. That's TC2, that's coming down. The mob ended, all the vans here. I'm gonna sneak up the crane. Oh mate, huh? <laughs> I just tried to uh, sneak up the crane without without letting them see me because they want me to use their radios. I don't like using their radios because it's the handheld ones. <coughs> um, I want them to use the sight radios because then uh, I can use the foot pedal. So now I haven't got to keep pressing the button on the bloody thing to talk and all that stuff and sight radios it comes through the speakers and I just put my foot on the pedal to talk which leaves my hands free but he collared me where am I going here? fucking blocked off all the access yeah <laughs> collared me before I got up so got their silly radios now this look this is the walkway this is how it should be all nice and clear And then all of a sudden I came here yesterday and the access to the crane, there's the crane, disappeared. So how do I get here? So I'm walking around there, but I have to come through here, this tiny little tiny little passage. Tripping over pallets. Look. Fucking shit everywhere. Yeah, there's my little den. So, see you up there. Captain's log. The date is 18th of November 2023. The time is 0732. Mission take down TC11, uh, TC12 using TC11. Yeah, that's our mission of the day. The wind is uh, it's not too bad. I was actually expecting real bad winds today. It was um, oh, two seconds. It was uh, it was a bit touch and go really. They've been back and forth all, all week. This is Saturday, by the way. I forgot to put it on the log. They've been uh, left to do it on the Saturday because of a weekend because uh, there can't be anyone working underneath us. It's up an exclusion zone. <sighs> yeah, so the wind has been a bit of an issue to the point where uh, Lynn Lease site manager, Susie, she, she's been up since two o'clock this morning worrying about it. <sighs> and it's pissing down the rain. I expected it to be worse today, um, but it's actually not too bad. Um, we're getting about 23 miles an hour so I don't think it's going to blow over today I don't think it's going to get too much I think it's just going to be a pain in the eye I think it's going to be difficult because uh, that it's always harder driving the crane at um, a high radius like, I think that's what is that I think that's going to be about 30 to 35 meters that crane can't remember on the jib so um, it's always more difficult and I haven't got hardly any hoist rope to play with because as you go further out obviously the um, down on the jib the hoist allows as well so you get I have to hoist up to get to that height so I'm not going to have that that much hoist rope at all what it makes the the swing quite erratic a lot quick so yeah it's going to be difficult so don't know what order they're going to do it in. They're either going to take the jib off first and then the counterweight or vice versa but the, the, the aim today is to get the whole of the top of the crane down onto the ground so down to the slew ring so it's leaving only the towers to do possibly tomorrow or a later date. Tomorrow is meant to be really bad for the wind so I want to go down there onto wagons get all the vans down there look uh, we've got an exclusion zone set up. They set this me up yesterday. This is me. Uh, usually, that's the boundary 
to my left. Usually it goes all the way down here, but for some reason DLR train people because you have to get permission uh, permission from the bloody train people network rail and all that to um to be able to do things like this because this crane's got to be on 100 percent which isn't at the moment so i have to do that so basically cut me off so i won't be able to slew over this building for some reason i don't know why that's in their stipulation so it's gonna be there and then behind me and across the boundary if you can see you very well so my mate my mate's gonna be working over there today on one of those cranes Danny hopefully you're gonna get some footage for you of here maybe some pictures or some some clips of some of the jibs and stuff like that jib sections and stuff like that going down I don't know how much of the ground you can see from over there I'll wait to hear from the uh, the lads on the ground now for instructions so I mentioned Network Rail, uh, they're down there now. I just had to do a, a SME check just to make sure, because the, the, the SME came out yesterday to this crane to set new boundaries. So um, yeah, so this is this is the building to behind me. Uh, so that's the other crane there. So that all that red never used to be there. It used to be just there, which is the boundary of the building, but this is a uh, boundary of the site, sorry. So this is actually the building. For some reason, they don't want us going over there. So I've just had to check that I don't go over the boundary towards, if you've got, it's about three miles away. <laughs> Bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, you can see the, the rail line over there. So, um, and obviously like the other, the other building over there. Uh, so yeah, they've just been over there. They've just been down there by the um, boundary just to check where my hook block is, which is there. Uh, you can see it's cut me out, it's red so I can't see left, actually it's flickering so if I give out a bit more it stay, it stay red probably, uh, so I can't see left and I can't jib out, so let's just, just check that out, the wind doesn't look too bad, I think it's just going to be a pain in the arse stay, it's not even really borderline but it's just going to be a hard work. I reckon sight radio just shit. They've just been speaking to me on their radio, and it's well pants. This is the handheld radio they give me. This is this is old school. So this is a lot of cranes use these still, but um, mostly use the pedals. I've had to cover this pet. So this is the one, the working radio, or the slingers. Uh, well, I talked to the slingers too, and this is the crash radio pedal. I talked to if there was another driver up that crane, I'll talk to them, or if there was any other cranes, I'll talk to them through this pedal, and that'll come through that speaker, up there, left, right, it can get confusing when they're both talking to me at the same time, but uh, yeah, they give me this one, so I've had to, I was going to, what I, the problem with this is, because I'm so used to using this, when they're talking to me through this, I quite often put my foot on a pedal to talk to them, so I was going to sort of, cut these bands off and move out of the way but I can't be bothered so I'm just gonna stick my glove on it next to the here because they need drying anyway there so uh, I've already done it once when they just spoke to me there to do to do the SME test so if I know that's there if I know the gloves are there then um, <laughs> I'll hopefully get used to it but probably by the end of the job end of the weekend I'll get used to uh, using the handheld one motor roller my rollers are quite good, but that one's not very good. It might just be because he was mumbling. Yeah. The wagon's here. The boys are climbing. See them? Little red people on, the, on there. Taking bloody ages. I don't know if they've got tools or not. I, I imagine, I don't suppose they have, I imagine I'm going to um, lift all their tools up from. But there's one of the wagons anyway. I'm just passing them their tools now. Giving way out to them, so the anti collision is turned off. Keep going like that, mate. Got about three metres to go. <clears throat> anti collision is off, which allows me to uh, go right up to the crane, so you have to go nice and easy. Keep going, mate. 
driven down steady now, mate. Just on your jib. That's for on your jib. And I'll just jib there, mate. There you go. They've got hands on. What you don't want is loads of swing. What you don't want is loads of wind. Which is good because we haven't got it at the moment. We did have a, did have a few gusts uh, about 10 minutes ago. When we had a bit of rain come over. Just lower off now, mate. The rain has stopped and all is well. See flowering, mate. Meet us, guys. And stop there, mate. Now, they slewed me out of the way. Got their tools up to them, they slewed me out of the way. Now, now they've got to de rope the hoist. Before I take the jib off, you got all the hoist rope up the top. Uh, that's all got to go, so they're going to they're gonna come round towards me. And then they'll hoist right down towards their vans, they'll lay the rope, they'll put the block, the hook block on the floor, they'll lay the rope down on a figure of eight on the ground and then um, do all the bits and pieces up the top there, take it off the anchor point because there's an anchor point at the other end, on the hook block end then the other end, uh, where is the anchor point over there, um, yeah so that'll be that, so I've just made the call, the fellow who's up the top there, I can't remember his name now, um, he's just called down to him saying it's too windy, the wind has picked up a little bit actually. It's too windy to get the jib off, so there's no way they're going to get the jib off at the moment. We're still going to de-rope the crane and see how we get on. But the wind is due to drop down in an hour or so, so fingers crossed we'll start getting some sections off of it. It comes in, let me sections on there, one, two, three. Four. I think, I think there's four sections, deep sections. So we'll see how we get on. Captain's log update. The last log was uh, 0905. It's now 0925. The wind has got worse. The rain has got heavier. The lads, them, uh, gonna uh, gonna climb down. Well, they are climbing down now. Look. So at the moment, there's no chance of getting that jib off. They haven't even risked de in the hoist so it's not looking good at the minute I don't think it's meant to get any better so fair play to them very professional we've had subcontractors in the past subcontractor rec erectors they're a little bit gung-ho they don't really care about the wind too much and um, the thing is once you take the ballast weights off you, you, you sort of, uh, that's the tipping point, you, you're sort of committed. So you've either got to carry on or you've got to put things back together. You can't just leave the jib hanging on because you'd be off balance. Actually, it's the wrong way around. Once you take the jib off, you've got to do the balance weights. One of the two anyway. Yeah, so you're kind of committed. So you've either got to put stuff back on if you're bought in or you've got to carry on. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're professional. So just got to keep it updated really. I've got to monitor the wind up here. Although my screen, my readings on my screen are not very accurate at all. But the um, I've got the the uh, the wind crane thing, which gives signals every 10 or 15 minutes on the app. Sends it down to the office as well. They got it on their computer screen. So I'll monitor it. Well, they can monitor it as well on their app. So we'll wait and see what happens. But it doesn't look good at the moment. So apparently sight have told them that it's not too windy. So um, they've got them to go up in the man rider. You see on the front camera there, they're up in the man rider. They're just, uh, they've got a little handheld anemometer just to take some readings for a little while. I've got it above, I've got them above the building height. I mean, what can you do? What can you say? It's actually not too bad at the moment, but the thing is, it's, it's a really awkward one. What they don't understand is, once you're committed, you're committed, you've all got to take, like I said earlier, you've either got to take it all off, or put it all back together again. It's a lot of work putting it all back together. So who knows? They've just missed, uh, just missed some big gusts. Better if they stay up there a little while. 
hopefully it's not going to get too bad where they start spinning around like a helicopter. It's 20 to 12 now, we still haven't done anything. Decisions haven't been made. I think it's probably getting a bit late in the day now to start doing this. It's going to take them a couple of hours to um, get all the rope off and then do all the rest of it. You know, it's going to start getting dark about four o'clock. I don't think because it's going to be enough time. Got people walking down there on the phone. There's a risk. I should have said no. Just one of those things, don't it? You just never know. They could have called it off and then um, come today, the wind could have blown over and uh, be really calm or it could have got a lot worse and we'd be uh, you know over 36 miles an hour weather you just never know but they they risked it for a biscuit risked it for they risked it for a biscuit and this is what what's happened i mean right now it's 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 not too bad at all really well i'll say that my, my hook my block is swaying around quite a bit but it's probably doable probably doable but when these rain clouds keep coming over it picks right up and that's what you got to worry about it's those gusts unexpected and you can imagine um, the jib sections is quite long you don't want those spinning and they don't want to be going out climbing on that jib in high winds as well so I don't think it's a good idea but who am I Captain's log. The time is 1200. The mission has been aborted. Like I said, it's too late in the day. It's too windy. It's too much of a risk. I think they've made the right choice. So, that be it. Question is, will it get done next weekend? Who knows? Dun, dun, dun. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Before you go, I've got some interesting news that will be of use to a lot of you. There are two things that are needed in construction. There are people who can plan the work and put the method statements in place and ensure the work is done properly. And there are also people who can carry out the work who are qualified and competent. Luckily, what we've done, we've collated with some professionals that can ensure these two things can happen. Firstly, you've got your APs. If you need any lift plans or audits done, we've got some APs on board who can get these jobs done for you. And if you need MVQ, levels two to seven in any areas in construction, we've got some NVQ assessors on board that can do that for you. They can cover any area, whether it's crane supervising, sling signaling, crane operating, AP, and that's, that's the lifting industry, or whether it's any other area like ground workers, carpentry, plant operating, management, you name it. So if you need any of these services, contact us. You can email us directly at info at constructioncogs.com or you can look at our services page. I'll leave the link in the description where you can see profile of each professional and what they do and what their experience is. If you need MVQs done, just let us know which category you want your MVQ in and, and your time frame. And if you want lift plans or audits done, let us know the scope of works and again, the time frame of when you need it done by. And then we'll put you on to the right people. See you soon.